Hello everyone and welcome back to the next tutorial for the OpenM. Uh, this one uh, we're going to be talking about the um, newly added remote access or remote control feature. Um, for this uh, video, once again, I'll be using my server 2019 uh, VM. And um, you'll want to uh, download the remote access add-on from the openm.com slash downloads. Uh, in order to use that add-on, add -on, you will need to be using the openm 1.3.0 or newer. Right, I've already gone ahead and downloaded the add-on and placed it on my server. So I will go ahead and install that now. It's pretty simple. Uh, there's actually nothing to configure. Just follow the prompts. And one thing to mention um, is the remote access um, piece needs to be installed on one of your comm servers. So if you're only using one server, that's fine. Just put it on the same server as everything else. Um, if you've split up your comm servers, then pick one of them that you want to use and place it on that comm server. Uh, this feature right now, uh, I am labeling this as experimental because I haven't really had a lot of testing um, done with this yet. Um, so with that being said, uh, you can actually only install this on one comm server at the moment. Um, so the hope is um, once testing is done and everything looks good, then um, I'll add the, the redundancy piece or scalability to install this onto multiple comm servers, um, assigning different comm servers to um, different clusters. All right. uh, while this is installing, um, I did want to mention um, that this remote access piece is um, it's actually a separate program called Remotely. Uh, it can be found on Remotely.1, the website. Um, and it was created um, by an individual um, named Jared. Um, here's his GitHub page. Um, you can visit it, github.com slash sponsors slash lucent dash S-E-A. Um, and if you find this add-on helpful, um, go ahead and send a little bit of cash his way. Um, you, he's got a PayPal link right here for a one-time payment, or you could send him a um, monthly uh, donation or sponsorship. So like I said, this is, um, I've took um, this software and added a few other API um, methods that I could call to make this integration easier with the OpenM, um, but really all of the um, all of the hard stuff here was done by Jared. So um, go ahead and send him a couple bucks if you find this feature useful. And there we are. Installation is finished. We'll go ahead and configure that now. Log in to the Terms UI. Select admin settings, client comm servers, and you'll select the comm server that you're going to install this on. I've only got one. View and we'll select remote access settings. First thing you want to do is enable this comm server for remote access and then we'll put in the URL it's going to be the same as your comm server but on port 8000 I'll update that so if you look at my um, general tab so my URL um, the IP for this comm server is 56.100 so it would be the same for the remote access and port 8000. Um, but one thing to mention is this IP right here is just for this demo. Um, typically, you're definitely going to want to use a, a fully qualified domain name here. That will enable you to um, open this up to the outside and allow remote access for computers that are both internal and external. 
um, if you don't use a fully qualified domain, um, you're not going to be able to provide that functionality for both inside and outside. So you'll point um, your DNS on the inside uh, to your internal IP, and then your, your public DNS record will go to your public IP, both under the same uh, fully qualified domain name. Now that that's done, we'll go to Actions and Initialize Remote Access. And we'll wait for this to configure. And right now it's just reaching out to uh, some of the APIs on the remotely installation and setting up some users and copying some files. Once that's done, um, it's a good idea to run the health check just to verify that everything did set up properly. All right, that means that uh, remotely is installed and configured to work with the OpenM. So let's create a policy that will enable this on some of the client machines. So I'll create a new policy on what's called enable remote access. Scroll down to remote access and change it to enabled. And then I don't want the server logging result, I'll turn off that. And we do want to keep this frequency set to ongoing. There we are. And I'll assign that to one of my groups. Yeah, it looks like I don't actually have any computers. Um, this is an old one, an old video. Let's get rid of that. So let me install the toke on one of these machines. And I'm actually going to install toke um, right on the um, the server just for this demo. Let's see if it shows up. Refresh this, there we are. All right, so there's our, um, the OpenM server. I never gave it the name, but that's it. If, I'll assign that to my group. Activate the policy, and then I will force that computer to check in so we don't have to wait an hour. Right. While it's checking in, it should be uh, installing the client that's necessary for remote access. Uh, if we refresh this page, uh, this remote access ID will get filled in whether that installation is complete. It usually takes a couple minutes. So while that is installing, let's go back to our client com server and talk about um, SSL certs for remote access. Um, since this add-on isn't directly um, integrated with the OpenM, the, um, the encryption that the OpenM uses doesn't apply here. So you're definitely going to want to change this to um, use SSL. So I've created a pretty easy way for you to do that. All you need to do is go to Actions and click Create Remote Access Certificate. And that will use the same um, certificate authority that the OpenM uses to create a certificate for you. You'll, you'll want to do this after you put your fully qualified domain name in here. So I'll download that cert. I'll put that on my server. I'll install it. And this is just a way to use, um, leave this password blank, to use them, the certificates that are built into the OpenM to secure your remote access piece. 
if you have a a certificate that you want to use, that's fine. It's probably um, even a better option, but this would also work. So I'll go to INET Manager, and you'll see there's a new application here called Remotely. Select Bindings, and I'll add HTTPS binding. We want to use port 444. And the certificate that I just installed, so this, <clears throat> this matches what was in the uh, remote access URL. So if you had used a fully qualified domain name, that would be here instead of an IP. Select OK. Um, so the good thing about using the same certificate authority um, is that any of your computers that have token installed are, are actually already going to trust this certificate. And let's go back and check on our computer. And there we are. So the remote access ID is filled in, so we know that it's ready for remote access. Let's go ahead and see if it works. I'm going to change this enhanced mode to a basic session. Actions, remote control. And it says right here, asking user for permission. So if we go over to our server, there's the window. It says uh, remote control session has been requested. Do you want to allow it? We'll click yes. And there we are. So now we are controlling this server right from within the OpenM which is actually piggybacking off of remotely. And from here, there's some controls over here you can play around with um, your connection quality. Uh, green means you're peer-to-peer, -peer, which is the best. Um, there have been reports of that causing some issues, which is why this remote access WebRT status of RTC status is here. Um, if you disable that, it will not use WebRTC. So if we reconnect now that that is disabled, authorize this. Now you'll see that our connection will be yellow, which means relayed, so it's not quite as good, but still functions. All right, let's give close that. Let's go back to our SSL settings, make sure that works. Access, so we'll change this to HTTPS. Just four, four. Run a health check. All checks passed, so we know we can connect over SSL. And let's just try it again. So I'm getting a warning here, and that's because the computer that I'm using to view this remote access session does not have the TOKA client installed. If it did, um, you would not get this warning. Or if you'd used a properly um, signed certificate. Allow it. And there we go. And now we're working um, with encrypted communication. And the last thing I want to show you um, is a setting for remotely. So right now it's set up to um, ask the user to allow the session. 
which is probably what you want to stick with. But if for some reason you want to disable that option, you can do that. Uh, we under C, program files, the OpenM remotely, app settings.json, and we'll find force attended access. We'll set that to false. Save that. Now, if we try and start a remote control session, it should just go right in without needing verification or authorization from um, someone on the, on the computer or server, in which case this it did. Let's do Yeah, it just disconnected my VM session. There we go. Remote control started, and no one on here had to um, accept that. Let me just show that again now that it's actually logged in. Got actions, remote control. And it goes right in. Um, so that can be a little bit dangerous. Um, it's definitely not recommended. Your users, you definitely want to let them choose whether or not someone should be remoting in. But the option is there to disable that should you need to. All right, that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching.